Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, nervous. It's hard to go after Colin. <laughs> We're not master storytellers. And uh, <laughs> Walter Day is in here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Ryan. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to do it this way, but this is the best way it works. So all three of you clearly have accomplishments that are worthy of being honored. But Rob picks out individuals at a time and does them in cycles, you know, year after year. So Ryan, this is your day. You're getting a trading card. Wow. <laughs> so this, this is a personal gift from Rob and Bridget. We've been giving out, you know, cards in many of the sessions during this weekend and uh, you're today's uh, honoree and you have this uh, special award <laughs> that hang on the wall. And I personally think these awards, you know, you're going to hang this on your wall and your great grandchildren are going to have it hanging on their wall. Uh -huh. And people are going to come and say, what the heck is this? And they're going to proudly say, my great grandfather was part of the birth of the pinball video game age. <laughs> so. So stand up here so we can get a photograph. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting that. And you know, it's always, it's a group effort, of course. We all, we all work on pinball map. Yeah. <laughs> I was the main point of contact, I guess, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right, that's our time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, why we'd keep talking. Hope you um, learned a lot. This is incredible. Um, okay. Very cool. All right. My, my daughter took that photo when she was three years old, too, of me. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. All right. Reset. Uh, <laughs> So th thanks for coming uh, to mapping around with the pinball map. Um, my name is Scott Wainstock uh, from Portland, Oregon, war-torn Portland, Oregon. Uh, and uh, I'm one of the three um, contributing members of the map. Ryan? I'm Ryan Gratzer. Uh, I started it with Scott in 2008. Um, I'm a urban planner. And <laughs> I help with the design and the data management and uh, the, some of the programming. I'm Beth Poor. I'm uh, from Portland, Oregon as well. Uh, I got involved with Pinball Map, I suppose, around the year 2015 or so. But I, I've been uh, more involved uh, in the most recent years uh, w doing the rewrite of the mobile app. So uh, that's what I primarily contribute myself all right here we are so oh yeah an agenda <laughs> um, set <laughs> expectations here so we were gonna walk through the history of the pinball map it started quite a while ago it's gone through a few iterations along the way um, kind of talk you through our philosophy um, there are some things that we decided very early on um, with the pinball map what we wanted to accomplish we stuck with those along the way um, and our approach to distributing this information and taking it in from the community. Because the theme here is going to be without uh, people updating the map, there is, there's really no map. Like we're just three schmoes here on the stage. Uh, Maybe we should explain our uh, and some Q and a, sassy uh, moves today. Yeah, that, was, that was our production company that we made. Yeah, Ryan <laughs> and I made a series of skateboarding videos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And this is actually my cat, Sassy, rest in peace. Um, for those who are, I don't know why you would pay that close attention, but a lot of our cats show up on the various iterations <laughs> of the maps. Sassy was special. Um, or, yeah. yeah, so our, our accomplishments with the production company were skateboard videos and then pinball map. And it's a fake right. company, of course. It's not <laughs> anything right. real. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll, you'll see more of Sassy. All right, and then we'll have some Q&A if, if you have any questions for us. So uh, I guess the first question is, how many people in here use the pinball map? <laughs> That's so <laughs> weird. Because, um, <laughs> uh, 
So it started in 2008, Ryan and I were roommates, and I actually didn't play pinball at all before I met Ryan. I, I probably played it here and there, but I was an arcade guy, all right. Um, Donkey Kong and Galaga, that was my game. Um, and then Ryan showed up and he had a Paragon machine, and you know, who doesn't want a roommate with a Paragon machine? So that went into the basement. Um, Ryan and I are not huge drinkers. We like to, we like to party. But uh, we didn't want to go to every bar in Portland to try to find where the pinball machines were. Uh, we also didn't have cars. Um, so every destination was a, was a journey. And we thought, there has to be a better way. Um, so does anyone have a guess in 2008 what the most popular per peer-reviewed statistics uh, pinball locator was? Any guesses? It wasn't us. We didn't exist. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Pinside started in... 2011. So two. Pinside did not have a locator in 2008. The winner in 2008, the main uh, locator was Pinball Rebel. Does anyone know Pinball Rebel website? It's still around, actually. And, uh, but, you know, it was not very user-friendly for updating. And uh, so... Weird. It's got the robot with the gun <laughs> on it, though. It was a really good image. I remember that. Um, okay, so so anyway, what what the heck is a pinball map? Seems like we know, but uh, it was a <laughs> website and then application, mobile phones application. Uh, it's entirely user updated. We source information from the community. Um, it's totally open source. You can go download it right now. You can send us new features. You can do whatever you want with it w within reason. Um, and it's just a hobby project. Like, to, to be honest, for me, it was a portfolio piece at the time. I uh, was a computer programmer, but I wasn't a very good one. Um, so I decided to, to get better at it. And what, way, what better way than to have a project? So you'll see um, the layers of the pinball map follow uh, my programming career progression. Um, with Ryan uh, always at the helm the, the whole way through. If it was, if this was uh, a movie, uh, I guess you would be Steve Jobs, <laughs> and I would be Wozniak, yeah. and you would be uh, a hotshot programmer who swoops in at the end and saves the whole thing. <laughs> 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 I don't know any. I don't know any Apple people today. Anyway, <laughs> that's who we are. Uh, so, so that's that. It was just a hobby the whole way through, and today remains a hobby. Like I, you see, a lot, a lot of people probably know Ryan. Just know that this is like a labor of love for this guy. So it, it's impressive. And maybe it's worth going through some of the stats that are on here, like because you know one of the goals is to have a, a up to date map where people are always updating it, which sadly means that places get removed from the map when they no longer have machines. And uh, this stat, I think, the locations removed, almost 12,000 is testament to that, where since 2008, there's been a lot of places added. And sadly, you know, some businesses close, or they just no longer have machines anymore. And while it is sad every time a machine is removed from a place, to us, it's also a good thing, because it means that people are updating the map. and. Uh, you know, it, it demonstrates that people are managing in the data and updating it, which is, is a good sign. Cool. Yeah, it's a great sign. Um, so there's various tools on the site to aid operators. They can, basically it's a, a database table, an operator, and you can be tagged at a location saying operator, Ace Music or you know Ace Games is the operator at this site, and the the tool is basically that we wanted to make it so that they can quickly update their own sites, so they can search their own locations and bring up all the Ace Games locations, and quickly add and remove all the machines to and from them, and uh, we offer other tools too, they can opt in to getting notifications about comments made on their machines. So once a day, if they opt into that, they'll get a, an email saying that someone left a comment saying, you know, the left flipper's broken, and then they can be notified basically when things go wrong based on whatever people are inputting in there. So right now, and we, yeah, 
Yeah, and you know, we've just built that up over the years of uh, uh, getting more operators on board. They just have to message us and if they want on it. Okay, um, and I guess the last point here is we don't have ads. We have a Patreon account because after a while it, you know, was, it was costing some money. So appreciate everybody who pitches into that. But we wanted it to be a very clean, um, non pop y thing. So the history of this thing, uh, like I said, uh, Ryan and I were roommates in beautiful Portland, Oregon, um, hanging out in a basement um, with laptops and Paragon. Uh, at the time in Portland, there was a map, um, but it wasn't searchable, and it was kind of updated by just a few folks. So what we did is we, uh, I don't know, what we, we rolled up our sleeves, I guess, and um, yeah. started making a framework to take Google Docs and make them searchable. I think that was the first goal. Mm -hmm. um, from there, uh, we started to get some attention from operators because they were seeing people update machines and they didn't necessarily agree with the updates. They wanted a little more visibility um, of what was going on at the spots. Uh, so we started building tools for them. Uh, but all the whole time, this was still just Portland. Uh, we saw other cities had their own maps. Um, we didn't want to step on toes. We yeah, kept you know, there was often leagues in other areas that would maintain their own list of machines. Sometimes these would be Google Docs or, you know, whatever. S often not like a robust map that you could search. And that's when they started, people started contacting us and saying, hey, why can't you expand to our area? Right. And, and I, I think like, you know, Ryan with his poster here, geez. Uh, he can't be everywhere. He's not. He doesn't. He's not the United States of everything. Um, so we started building a concept of, of actual regions so that we could find the Ryans in the other areas. The people who know the locations, they know the machines, they know what looks fishy, um, just to make sure that there was a little bit of oversight. So we built new regions. I think we started in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, Seattle maybe, and yeah. Bay Area and Los Angeles also were some of the first ones, but the idea was we wanted to make distinct maps for the each area, and it sounds crazy maybe now, like talking about it like that, why, would, why don't you just make a global map that anyone can edit, but we were really, really fixated on the idea of having high quality data, and we only wanted to expand to areas where we knew there was an audience of people that were uh, telling us that they were going to administer the data, and they had a league that was going to, or you know, groups that were going to help them maintain the data. So we basically just grew very slowly, region at a time, with these distinct areas in order to get people on board and using it. Because one of the issues with Pinball Rebel was there were you know sites out in South Dakota in the middle of nowhere that someone had updated in 2002, and no one had touched in six years, and the site was filled with that really, really stale data, and we wanted to uh, not do that. And so we had no goals to have a global map or anything. We just wanted to make, here's your LA map, here's your Seattle map, have fun with it, and uh, yeah. So then something happened, um, and everyone had cell phones, and people weren't necessarily wanting to look at their laptops or, I don't know, what were desktops, uh, before <laughs> they left the house. Um, so we started building apps. Um, I also wanted to make a career out of making apps, uh, which never happened. Um, so we had a, uh, what is it, Android. Android native app, which means built directly and only for the Android. And then we had an iOS app, which was built directly and only for iOS. If anyone used those early versions, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, really hard to keep everything in sync. And that's is why we should, Beth needs a card too, because um, <laughs> Beth has really turned that whole thing around. Um, but we knew we needed apps, so we, we pivoted to that. Uh, like Ryan mentioned, um, well, maybe you didn't mention this. Uh, we didn't have users at first. Anybody could just pull up a website and anonymously delete everything. Nobody ever did, but they could have. Yeah, we want to. That's a maybe a shout out to how nice the pinball community is. Is that there was not much tampering, 
and a huge amount of opportunities to tamper with the data, mm -hmm. to mass delete things, to anonymously comment with bad words, uh, you know, and uh, it just didn't really happen. So we have backups. We've never really had to use them. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, but we added users because people had preferences after a while, and people wanted to put high scores, and people wanted to gamify it. Like, oh, I added ten machines last week. Thank you. Yeah. We'll get you a card. And uh, there ended up being a couple people that did mass delete. I mean, so <laughs> <laughs> the caveat is that a couple did, and then we're like, okay, we need to make users so we could then ban you. Uh, so, <laughs> so, okay, this is what Ryan talked about. We eventually became a global map, the thing that you know today. Uh, it became too hard to say, like, sorry, Scotland, you can't have a map because you don't have 20 machines. So we just <laughs> said, you can put your machine there, and we'll come visit. All right, I'm going to go a little quicker through these next ones because it's going faster than I thought. Um, there's Sassy again, and you may notice her head is buried deep into the uh, orbit of Paragon. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so this is what the <laughs> site looked like at, at launch in 2008. My Except this is from the Wayback Machine, so the JavaScript isn't loading correctly. My high school girlfriend put together the HTML and the CSS for us as a portfolio piece. She's now a designer at Google. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you see at the bottom the high scores were there. We we had an idea, but we weren't quite there yet. So then, um, Ryan, one of Ryan's like many um, superpowers is he does all the layout and design for the site. And let me tell you, Ryan never stops thinking about this stuff. Every color is intentional. Um, it's great. So you see, it's starting to evolve to include more features, but still is just the Portland pinball map. Yeah. And all, and I'm not a designer, so that's probably very apparent when you look at some of this. Maybe too. not by know. trade, but I would argue you are yeah. a designer. Okay. You got a card now. <laughs> the oh, false, okay. false modesty can yeah. disappear. No, all but right. you'll see, you'll see in a moment that there was some, there was wild decisions over the years. This is this is a colorful one. I like <laughs> this one. Uh, it's got some earth, earth tones are starting to come in. Yeah. Um, and you see the or pastels, I suppose. Um, and the different regions are here now. Yeah, so back in the day, the landing page was essentially these regions, and you then you click into a region that's near you, and we had to make these old graphics and all that stuff for every region we added, and I think now we have 97 of them or so, uh, and they're still there, and we still have administrators managing them, 100 or so administrators that are behind the scenes helping moderate submissions that come in, essentially, because people make lots of mistakes and those include submitting duplicate locations there's just a lot of there just has to be a filter between non administrators and what everyone sees in the in in the on the site and then for every new location there is human intervention at some point mm -hmm. to confirm that the new location is is ac accurate and exists and is also a, a public location that the people can come to yeah, 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 that's another thing. We're only listing public locations, public venues that, you know, that is a somewhat hard to define um, metric, I think, because, you know, places sometimes have entry fees, sometimes places are clubs to some degree, but if they're an exclusive club that can uh, turn down applicants, then that probably isn't public. But if it's a club that will let anyone join, then that is public. So it's, it's, it takes a lot of work to figure out what counts as public. And people generally, in our opinion, don't want a big map showing places they can't go to. Um, so that's why we try to stick to the public venues. This is the, the wild years, lots of, lots oh, of yeah. color. Uh, our, our house that w we shared was really close to this bar. And this bar is the only place I've ever been to where I got free drinks. Because we went there so much, um, <laughs> then they knew us. But I have no memory of playing any of those games. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe the same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, what are we seeing here, Ryan? Oh, uh, yeah. Just more of the same. Just showing yeah. that you can, you, you know, Look at those just showing the evolution of the design essentially over the years. And we we don't go to now. We're just showing kind of the past just to see what it looked like. Trying crazy fonts. 
Mm-hmm. Everyone loves that. crazy fonts that oh you yeah. could barely read. Wow. Yeah, that <laughs> okay. was maybe a couple months, and I was like, eh. Uh, lower, lower left, you see another cat, Solomon. <laughs> yeah, that was my Solomon. cat, yeah. Solomon. <laughs> Rest in peace. Uh-huh. Um, oh, and then here's, here's a, the first attempt at mobile apps. Again, apologies for anyone who used these things. Yeah. It and was... Uh, and Beth, do you want to talk about what was problematic to some degree about this mobile app? I'm right Steam. here, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll tell you what uh, was wrong yeah, with it. Okay. Uh, personally, for myself, when I started using the, the app, uh, I started getting into pinball myself not until closer to 2013 or so. And at that time, I was traveling between Portland and Seattle a lot. So back then, in the mobile app, you'd have to realize that you've left your current region and change your region in order to actually access the the locations for where uh, you currently were so uh, the the app was still one of my favorite apps absolutely and this is what drew me into contributing in the first place because i it's still it was an excellent app but that that step where if you left your current location or wanted to look at what machines were in another state you'd have to go in and manually change your region within the app so that was just uh, like an extra step that that we don't have anymore. Yeah, it's a point of friction to have these regions and have things constrained to different regions. And eventually it just became too many, there was too much demand for people to add locations all over the world that we couldn't do the, the stick to the regional plan forever. And that, that, so that brings us to like 2018 or something like that maybe, is that when you started, 2019? I think we released the new version in 2019, and we started building it in 2018. Yeah, but then prior to that, you made the the regionless map that just has everything all together in oh, it. Oh, did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> it's all a blur. I mean, for, for those who care, like, the whole thing started as a big Perl application, which is very self-contained. There was no way of getting at the data in the database. It was Perl, which... I still think is a pretty decent language. Uh, but we moved to Ruby on Rails at one point. And the reason we did that is because that framework lends itself really well to APIs. And we knew that if we were going to build mobile apps, we needed a way for those mobile apps to get at the core database instead of like shipping everything off every time it loaded, which is just silly. So that kind of feeds into like the general philosophy of what it is we're doing here. Yeah, and you know, one thing that Expo is a good example of is uh, how businesses related to pinball are thriving right now. There's so many niche businesses and then so many manufacturers right now. Um, And we didn't want to start a business, though. Um, We just wanted a hobby, and we wanted to make a tool. And so we... You know, we're, I guess I could maybe say that we're just not entrepreneurs, maybe. Or something. Yeah, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, we're not entrepreneurs. I we yeah. didn't, we don't want a business. We don't want to quit our jobs and just do this and pursue it and sell ads or something. We just wanted it to be something on the side that was community run, and uh, so we focused on open source software. And it's been on GitHub, which is a site where the code is posted since 2010. Anyone can, like Scott said, create a development environment, pull down the code, run it locally, make a modification. You could change a color. You could change a pink to a blue and submit that back to us if you wanted to change that color and have everyone see that. Um, it's, you know, the there's power like that in your hands. And uh, we thought that was a fun way to run all this. Um, We also feel a great amount of debt to all of you who edit the site, and we thought it would be unfair to monetize based on all the work that you all have done. Um, And we'd rather have you all consider the data to be yours as well as ours. We're just kind of managing it, and you're all updating it. Um, and, uh, And with the API that Scott mentioned, you can then pull down the data and use it in a variety of ways that are not via our website or not via our app. You could make your own tools. On that point, then, uh, I thought it would be interesting to share who uses our API because it is used by a lot of folks. And uh, and it, here's an example, if no one knows really what an API is, 
And it's, it's just essentially someone making a query. In, in this case, you could make that query, it's a, it's a URL basically, where you're saying, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a brief walkthrough of what's happening in that example. That is, that is what Stern uses. If you go to Stern's website, there's a link at the top that says locator. It, I'm not talking about the insider connected one. They have another map. And it, you, it just directly makes a query to the pinball map API and then spits out results every time someone loads that. And that is them saying, uh, well, first when you load the site, we have a, a flag that is all Stern Army locations. So when you load their little locator, there's pins already on a map. And that is another flag we have that we communicate with Stern. Every week they s tell us, hey, add this site as a Stern Army one. And it's just a little button we click, and it's tagged as Stern Army. And it shows up on their locator. Then when someone wants to make a query on that Stern locator site, they basically put in a zip code or a city, which is what you see at the end there, address Chicago. So this is doing just a, a radius search around the geolocation of Chicago, or the distance of 50 miles. It includes all locations that have at least one Stern machine, manufacturer Stern. No details equals one means it just kind of uh, filters out some of the data that they might not need in that request, such as like machine comments and stuff, so it's a quicker request. Uh, that's it, so that's, and then the background right there is essentially what the request looks like. Uh, when it comes in, and they just grab those keys in the JSON output and show it on their own website. And so it's 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 a it's a free thing that we just allow anyone to do. You don't need an API key to do it. Um, and others use it too. Uh, Match Play uses it. If you want to start a tournament, you can say what location your tournament is at and it'll query our database and it can populate all the machines at that location and so you don't have to manually put in, okay, this tournament is gonna have these 12 machines, it just, it just uses our data. And others, uh, Scorbit, Pindigo, Pintips, Kineticist, as we saw, uses it and that's a really good example of someone who pulls the data and you know adds to it and augments what we have and you know, we don't want to say this is the only way to access it is through our site with only these images and only this description. People can uh, build upon it. Um, and similarly, the Pinball Map app is just a, an app that anyone can make that just accesses our API. Uh, there's no special magic going behind the scenes or anything. Uh, so anyone could have made that, but we happen to be the ones that made it. Um, and uh, I thought it would be interesting to look at, and anyone here could probably chime in too, because we might be missing something. But uh, you know, are there any other sites that are, uh, are tools, pinball-related tools that are open source? The only one we could think of was the IFPA companion app, which pulls down data using the IFPA's API and makes you know uh, a new interface where you can interact and track your track your IFPA scores. You know, it augments the the interface from the IFPA website. Um, and you know, there's a lot of there's other tools that are not open source, but they do have an accessible API, which is wonderful. It means that other people can use that data, uh, such as as we saw in the last presentation from Kineticist uh, OPDB, which is uh, Essentially, I would say this helps answer the question of who should have an API, and I will say uh, the Internet Pinball Database should have an API, IPDB. They don't, though. They're very closed off, and they don't allow people to pull their data. They have, they're a tremendous resource, but you have to access it only on their site, and no one else can tap into that list of machines and use it on theirs. So as a counter to that, uh, Andreas, who makes Match Play, created OPDB, and we help um, manage that data. And it's a big list of machines that Scorbit and Kineticist and Pindigo, I think, and others and us use, where we, we're all 
speaking the same language of what machines, what the proper name of the machine is, what the year and manufacturer are, and all that stuff. And we could, you know, cross communicate with each other because we're using a shared ID for that machine. And uh, it, it's uh, something that, you know, IPDB sh probably should have done. Um, but I think we had maybe like questions throughout that we haven't been asking to you. I think that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Um, That's you. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, here's a question then. <laughs> Has uh, anyone here contributed code to Pinball Map? All right. Ben. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so not a lot of people. So I could I could just make a guess <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> Um, and uh, so, you know, five people have contributed code, including us, us three, <laughs> to, <laughs> to the app, uh, nine to the website, um, which, you know, it, it, it's helpful that we, I think, provide access to it, but there's, uh, there's barriers to that, which Beth will get into in a minute, but the, as Scott alluded to when he said that it's a, uh, you know, was something of a, um, example app, what is it? A portfolio, portfolio. piece, uh, is that that's what happens sometimes too, is like we had students that want to make a little student project for the, the and uh, that's honestly most of the people that use the, and contribute back to it is that, you know, they get, they get credits at their school if they say they issued a pull request or something like that to an open source app. I think it's a fun way to learn <laughs> programming if you. That's how I initially got involved, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, and so we had the, the we have, we've had three iterations of the iOS app, first made by Isaac, who was, um, he did Bracalope also for uh, tournaments, I don't know if people know that, and, um, you know, he just stepped up and did it, and then we had Frank Michael come in, just step up and did it, and then Beth came in and said, you know what, we need a React Native app, and she came in and stepped up and did it. Did I say we need a React Native app? Yeah, you said, yep. you guys <laughs> we, are we doing listen. it wrong. <laughs> I think I recall volunteering to take on one platform. It was going to be iOS, Android, or React Native, with a heavy preference for React Native. Oh. So. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when we went to React Native, that combined both of our and Android and iOS apps into a single uh, app now. So there's just the, the one code base for, for our mobile platforms. Uh, so that's been a, a nice change for, for folks if, if if you want to get involved, your your updates would be applied to to all mobile devices that are using the app. Um, so now I, I was just going to walk through some of the the different ways that you can contribute uh, to to Pinball Map if you're interested. Uh, first and foremost, it's it's really like the the edits that you all make to the the map on a daily, weekly basis. Like that is really important, and it's what keeps us alive and is the greatest contribution that, that like anyone can honestly be doing at this point. But if you want to get even more involved, um, we have different uh, ways of, of you, you being able to reach out to us to um, either come up with uh, feature ideas or, or letting us know if, if there's you think something's wrong with the app, reporting a bug or anything. So um, I think we brought up GitHub before, but if you go to github.com, you're welcome to at any time file an issue um, and an issue could it be a feature request or letting us know about a bug or, or just anything that you'd like to see changed within the app. Um, yeah, people complain to us a lot about issues and stuff, and it's more helpful to put that on GitHub where we can track it and resolve it and have more of a proper answer to that stuff. But, you know, that's another barrier to entry of creating a GitHub account. It's easier just to contact us and say what you want. Yeah, so like other ways to, to contact us, uh, like it, if you if there's a data issue that isn't able to be updated yourself in, in the app or, or just if you see anything funky, there's um there's a contact us section both in the, in the app and on the website. Uh, we're regularly checking those boxes. So uh, if, if there's anything that you see or would like to provide feedback for, we'd love to hear from you there. And then there's also the Pinball People Discord where um, 
of folks that are using the app or like Ryan will jump in there and, and often ask for, for feedback from folks. So you're welcome to join that channel and, and get involved in there as well. Yeah, and there's a, there's a link to that on the Pinball Map homepage. And it's just very helpful. Like how many Android users are having this issue? And then three people respond in five minutes. And so it's really a cool tool to interact with. I'm the only one on there of us three, but. <laughs> well, we often we struggle know. to recreate issues because like yeah it, it's really nice that all of our uh, mobile code is in one place now but it's also like we're serving several different types of devices so we can't always like if you're seeing something weird on on an android device like there's a good chance that we're we're not seeing that because we all typically use like iphones for instance and so like just letting us know if you see something weird it goes a long way so that we can fix it and, mm -hmm. and continue to make that better I think we only have like eight minutes. We should do Q and A, but maybe we should. Go oh sure, yeah. Oh that, yeah. You know. I think this was our our last main slide. And just in general, if you would like to go even like a step further, uh, also on GitHub, if you would ever like to submit any code, it, like actual code, you're welcome it, to open a pull request. Uh, th that's just like how we would in end up integrating any code that you would actually like to have be to be integrated into the app. And um, there are like Ryan alluded to earlier there are, there are some barriers to entry there but also we're very happy to help so please reach out to us uh, like I like I joined as a contributor when I was a student and I remember Scott especially being really helpful and in, in telling me some of the things that I should do to get going to make contributions and that like that meant a lot to me and it helped me get going and same to anyone here if you'd like to uh, ever have any code pushed into the app like just Talk to us. We'll we'd love to work with you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, first mention that uh, Expo is 2006. I expect the panel uh, ways to find pinball news on their socials. Um, Martin puts it up or pinball news every day, and that has become one of the most downloaded transcripts ever. Huh. Uh, Yeah. No, we weren't in 2006, no, but. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. It was so long ago. <laughs> I mean, we really just didn't want to go everywhere on yeah. our bikes. Yeah, and again, we were just focused on <laughs> Portland at the beginning. We're just saying, okay, we're just going to help us, and we had no grand plans or anything. Also, at that point, um, Greg gave the pinball and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. probably yeah. at parity for the amount of stuff we were discussing. So we could have seen yeah. I don't know. I think we were more focused just on Portland and uh, making something that was really easy. Like we were seeing a lot of uh, clunky interfaces essentially that were hard and we wanted to make it something you could search for. Search a machine and see where all those machines are. Uh, search, we had zones. So you could search a neighborhood in a city and pull up all the machines in that area. And so we wanted to keep it quite simple real simple interface so someone hopefully could just with a few clicks get everything they want uh, but then you know just help the community in Portland basically I think for my money too a lot of things come and go like it's easy to have the idea and put it together but we were focused on longevity and part of how we did that was this thing is tested from the ground up so we're confident we can keep making changes and not have to worry that we're breaking something it just makes it easier to hop in and add stuff. Whereas I think if it was a chore or if it was overly complicated, we would have just moved on a long time ago. Like Ryan never moved on. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh-huh. I have a question. I'm going to preface it with a story. Okay. I was at Kings. Oh, so oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm.
run the contest, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to show me about your app. Like uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Yeah, that was that was very generous and very cool surprise to get that uh, his prize money uh, donated straight to us. And you know, he's a contributor and submits locations to Pinball Map and stuff. And uh, over the years, we did mention that in in addition to being a free site, we tried to keep our costs low or f nothing for a number of years. And then after a while, because it kept growing and growing and growing, we would have to kind of beef up the infrastructure behind it. And uh, then we got, a couple years ago, Patreon. And that's the kind of main way, I think, we have Patreon supporters um, that help us pay for all the infrastructure costs. And I will note that it, it more than pays for the infrastructure costs. So we're fine. Yeah, we're, we're doing fine. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had to keep it as scrappy as possible yeah. for a long time, and so yeah. it's kind of baked into the the culture. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. Yeah, if you if you want to donate it it's it's helpful, but again, I would I honestly I feel like buying a t-shirt is maybe a better yeah. Way because sometimes do we people have don't even know. Yeah. No, I don't think we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're out of we do have <laughs> some, <laughs> and I I got sick of shipping them, so I just took the yeah. store down. <laughs> yeah, I guess we should do that. I do yeah. have stickers. Everyone here can have stickers. Uh, <laughs> lots of stickers. I brought a whole stack. Any other questions? Any other we questions? got like a minute and a half. Oh man, you uh, do it. Yeah, you do it. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. The s seasonal locations will sometimes will keep on the map year-round, and we'll have a location description that just says, you know, it's closed in the winter, don't go here. Um, because that saves us time to have to remove and add it again, or someone else submit it. Um, it is, you know, if somebody did want to submit a uh, pinball expo or something, they could, potentially, we could put it up and then remove it a few days well, later. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's there's a there's a burden right there of listing those. If the, the uh, event has an IFPA sanctioned tournament in the app, th if you go to the event section, it will show the event. So I, that that may not call it out as yeah as loudly as, as maybe we would like to expect. But um, I if there is an IFPA tournament, it is discoverable in the the app by going to events. Yeah, it pulls down that information. Uh, question in the back, you yeah. Oh yeah. I'm also an operator, so we're all the same. Uh -huh. So we can do that. So maybe I'll just say the same thing to the uh, group here. We're doing a small number of these East Coast East Coast. Mm. Yeah, sometimes things are, uh, you know, decisions are made based on demand for them sometimes, and, you know, that has come up. Yeah, that's <laughs> something of a low demand. It comes up, and we're like, man, we wish we could do it. But then that's where sometimes we default to pull requests welcome. You can add that feature if you'd like to, but we could put it on our list, and it might not always be at the top of the list. But, you know, we, we opted to have operator at the location level not at the individual machine level in order to kind of simplify, you know, people's, you know, what they have to click and how many stuff they have to click or something like that. But there's, you know, it could be down the road if we figure out a good design solution. Yeah, we limit 
some fields, you know, and that's from experience over the years, we've found that users tend to make mistakes with some things. Um, that's why, you know, auto-completing address information as you submit is a good addition because that people would type things all wrong all the time if they are having to submit every, like, here's the address, here's the state, here's the zip. It would come in, in, a, in a, as a messy format. So now we use the Google Places API to kind of autofill that information. If it's wrong, then the answer is just to contact us and an administrator will edit that information. Because it, you know, you have to regenerate the uh, latitude longitude so the pin shows up in the correct location. Um, so yeah, just tell us. Yeah. And also interesting, stats wise, I mean we get, I've probably had, we probably had like 20 locations submitted in the last two days since this event started. It just is like nonstop that people are all day, every day, sending us locations around the world. Uh, and it's, it's just interesting. People might not know how often they're coming in. That's why we're happy to have kineticist articles where we can highlight the top, you know, the most interesting ones that come in every month. And that's, that's out of, we're, we're highlighting eight locations out of like 200 that come in every month there. Yep, we're done. Thanks everybody.